222 day, we will talk about XRP, SHX, and particularly the connections into the ACH payment network that processes over 80 trillion per year. And it all connects back to Ripple, Stellar, Stronghold, and IBM, and all of the connections that come out of the individuals who have been involved in PayPal over time. Ripple and Stellar will be foundational in the market infrastructure of the new financial system. This US dollar could, when supported by crypto, work not just on these crummy 50-year-old ACH rails and business hours wire transfer services, this medium traveling on things like the XRP ledger, this dollar could be the currency of the world. Why shouldn't it be? It already is in the traditional world. We just need the tokenized crypto rails form of it, and everybody can live in the Star Trek world. Like in Star Trek in the future, you're not really worried about people paying for dilithium crystals or tribbles, right? There's some currency and it's in the background and it moves around intergalactically between Cleons, the Federation, Romulans. We have that technology now. It didn't exist before. And so the U.S. can choose to lead, but if it doesn't lead, its sorry ass is going to be still in dollars, issued, run, overseen by people that live offshore. And so it is an absolute strategic imperative today for the U.S. to lead from the front rather than from behind. And so we have the technologies to do it. I believe there's resistance in pockets of the U.S. political system to that happening. But to me, it's a strategic imperative. And I intend to bang the drum and make sure that the U.S. leads rather than lags or obstructs this amazing Star Trek-like future that's there for us. The connections in between XRP and SHX are extremely important because StrongholdNet is interoperable with Stellar and the XRPL. XRP and XLM equal SHX. And we have an example of that here that explains how Ripple and Stellar connect to ACH within ISO 222 interoperability standards documentation and it explicitly calls out xrp and xlm here matcha can also form several financial institutions on top of ripple's common settlement protocol and again stronghold net is interoperable with the xrpl several networks or clubs of financial institutions may ultimately form on top of Ripple's common settlement protocol. And it calls out ACH here, and it also calls out SEPA over in the Europe as well. And Stronghold has important ties into that payment platform as well. So the interesting thing with Ripple and Stronghold are the connections into W3P. And it all goes back to how Ripple and they are connected because of Ledger Protocol, which is an open protocol for payments across different ledgers that can be compared to routers on the internet, which connect packets of money across independent payment networks. Here is a really good overview of the importance of the ILP. It's unlikely, I think it's almost impossible, that there's going to be one blockchain that is this monolithic thing that is going to be what everybody across the entire world standardizes on. By definition, there will be different ledgers, different blockchains, different networks that exist. So putting the entire world on one blockchain, fundamentally, I don't think it makes sense. It's not how the world is starting to play out. I don't think it's how, how the world will end up being played out. So uh, Ripple kind of pioneered this idea of how do you, how do you how do you address that problem? How do you create interoperability between different ledgers, between different payment networks? And so we came up with a protocol, just like there was um, TCP IP for the internet. Um, our engineering team has created something called the Interledger Protocol, or ILP. And the idea being that 
these different networks, blockchain just being one, you know, ACH, which is the sort of money, the intra-country um, check clearing, money moving uh, uh, network here in the United States. Visa is a network. You can argue that HSBC has a, a, a payments network, et cetera, et cetera. There are all these islands right now, and, and sure, you can, you can ask each of these networks to move on the blockchain, but then they're just kind of copying what they're doing and putting it over on a blockchain. There's scalability issues that come up very quickly when that happens. So the idea is, just like the internet connected uh, data networks around the world, there should be a, 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 a standard, uh, a protocol that connects these, these value networks, these payment networks. And that's really what the Interledger protocol that, that we've developed and is now open source. It's now out for other people to build on and improve on and deploy. But, but it, it sort of got its, its start within Ripple. And that's really the idea, is to create these, these networks so now you can have interaction between the networks and create that efficiency, that interoperability of value that we'd argue is lacking, sort of that third component after the interoperability of goods, the interoperability of data. You need the interoper uh, interoperability of, of um, value. And just like you need standards for those other two, you need standards for this and the ability to, to leverage something like the Interledger protocol to do that is super and super important. And so now here's the, the nice, pretty future state world. It's all interconnected and whatnot. We don't need to spend a lot of W3C, Ripple, the ILP, and ISO 222. Ripple is also on the Federal Reserve's Faster Payment Task Force, along with co-chairing the W3C's Web Payments Working Group. And who has ties into all 12 of the Federal Reserve Banks? Well, that is SHX because of their concentration on tokenizing ACH payments. The ILP is all about freeing the world's liquidity and unlocking that from multiple sources to, re to reduce capital costs. And of course, you have Ripple called out directly on here. In an article from W3C, it calls out Stronghold SHX for micropayments with streaming content and image content, which is from 2019. But it does talk about the announcement of a partnership with them that has capabilities to make payouts to US bank accounts, which directly ties into the ACE payments. Here is the web payments working group and who is involved. So you have entities like Amazon, American Express, Apple, who also has ties into the ILP, Facebook, which goes right back into SHX, Google, which I have explained they were early investors in Ripple, HBAR, Nacha, and Ripple is directly called out here. And it's a common response to hear that SHX is only a rewards token. And I don't really see where that's coming from because they are already acting as a payment coin with their stronghold net platform that is allowing companies to replace payments and use SHX itself. Here was a presentation on the ILP that was presented at Harvard, and it is talking about all of the money, which is a common thing that gets tossed around when people talk about the IOP and how it is designed to be able to connect everything and especially the institutions, which are worth not just trillions, but quadrillions. So the each conference is happening right now in M Miami where Stronghold is actually presenting. And Ripple is also there right next to the Federal Reserve. And here is what Stronghold will be presenting. It is about deriving pay by bank adoption to retail customers, which is exactly what SHX is concentrating on right now and how it is a d disruptive idea and technology. The ties into IBM with XRP, XOM, and SHX are also extremely important as well because all of those connect back into IBM and its Hyperledger platform, which I think is essentially the stellar network at this point. But this right here is talking about banks and LPs 
and how the Stellar consensus protocol is able to transact in between them. And of course, we know that that is one of the things that HX and Stronghold as an L2 on the Stellar network that is essentially acting as an application on top of the Stellar infrastructure is acting as. So the ties into IBM and SHX are extremely interesting. And I talked about this a couple of times, but on the exact same day that IBM was involved in announcements about instant and frictional transactions and how IBM and Samsung had semiconductor breakthroughs and how HSBC and IBM successfully designed and tested an interoperable multi-ledger CBDC, we had SHX hit about $21.58. Stronghold and IBM have been collaborating together on the Stronghold USD. That is a stable coin that has been introduced into IBM's worldwide network. And that is not currently active at this point in time, but it is not inactive either. It is just background. When the treasury taps into FedNow, it will create an urgency for banks to use it. And Stronghold talks a lot about FedNow. And they have extensive ties into that, primarily at this time, not only because of XRP, but because of Bancorp as well. Fed now has already onboarded over 300 institutions as of the end of 2023. The explosion of credit, debit, and digital payments in the ACH network will gain traction. And that was in response to Mr. Man XRP's own tweet about Fed now and SHX. Stronghold Pay allows companies to embed ACH payment processing into their own applications and maintain ownership of the customer experience. And again, the XRPL and Stellar are called out here. Stronghold has been enabling institution adoption since 2018. However, unlike its competitors, Stronghold isn't targeted at the general public. Instead, it's aimed at businesses and financial institutions. So it then goes on to say, in fact, Stronghold has dramatically reduced its support for general users. In April, it barred retail investors from its exchange. So we see that initially they were speaking about cross-border payments being allowed retailer, retail users to be able to utilize the exchange and, and the power of Stronghold USD. And then a few months later, backtracked barred retail investors from the exchange and made it purely for institutions and businesses. So this is very interesting if we then think about the asset management asset, asset manager of Franklin Templeton utilizing Stellar, gaining that approval, and then Stronghold has basically made this uh, their exchange with Stronghold USD exclusively for institutions. And I think the reason for that is it would allow institutions and businesses to be able to invest in blockchain without the interference of retail or the focus of retail. So doing this very, very quietly. Um, and as I say, for me, this is extremely bullish because when we start to understand what Stronghold Net is, and we understand that the SHX powers it is the currency of Stronghold Net, you then start to see the correlation um, and the work that they've been doing in highly regulatory focused and in high compliance areas with their institutional exchange. And then that's really just a blueprint for then the real world utility adoption of Stronghold Net.